come on, let's open up our Bible. I think uh, Pastor Lex and uh, I'm going to call her Minister Christy for the time being, uh, for just being willing to uh, plow uh, through the, the tough ground, to plow uh, through um, the difficulties that uh, that comes with, with being worship leaders. And, and we thank you because uh, what many of you don't realize is when you uh, take on the responsibility of leading others into worship, uh, you not only take on the responsibilities of your cares, concerns, and issues, but you take on their responsibility of the responsibility of their cares, concerns, and issues because you have to go forward, go before uh, any and everything. Uh, and plow up a uh, tough ground and, and knock down the weeds that have grown in our lives and in order to make a clear path uh, for the Spirit of the Lord to operate uh, and for the Word of God uh, to go forth. So we thank them for that this morning, and I pray that you were blessed. Uh, I pray that you worshiped in your home. I pray that you gave God the praise that he is due, uh, even if you're in privacy of your own home. That's the best place to praise him because he declares in his word that that which you do in private, he will reward you openly for it. So let's turn our Bibles this morning to Joshua, the second chapter. We're going to go to Joshua, the second chapter, and I want to look at four verses of Scripture this morning, uh, verse 15 through 18. Joshua, the second chapter, verse 15 through 18. And it reads as follows. So she let them down by a rope through the window, for the house she lived in was part of the city wall. She said to them, go to the hills so, that, so the pursuers will not find you. Hide yourselves there three days until they return and then go on your way. Now the men had said to her, this oath you made us swear will not be binding on us unless when we enter the land, you have tied this scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And unless you have brought your father and your mother, your brothers, watch this, and all your family into your house. I want to read verse 15 one more time uh, because this is uh, where we'll spend majority of our time this morning. Verse 15 says, so she let them a rope. Through the window, for the house she lived in was part of the city wall. This morning, as we continue our uh, theme through sitcoms, we're going to uh, borrow uh, as, our, as our theme today or as our title uh, for our sermon today, we're going to borrow uh, from the great prophet Martin uh, Lawrence. We're going to borrow a, a phrase that he used for our title, and that phrase is simply, you go girl. You go girl. The very first Mother's Day, uh, beloved, was celebrated in 1908. However, we must go back some 40 years to the birthing ground of the day uh, we know as Mother's Day. It was during and following the Civil War when Ann Jarvis made a concerted effort to foster friendship and community between the mothers on both sides of the war. She started a committee in, in, a committee in 1868 which established the first glimmer of today's holiday. In 1868, it was simply called Mother's Friendship Day. Ann Jarvis had a daughter named Anna Reeves Jarvis. Anna sought to honor her own mother by establishing an intimate day of observance that is very obviously the basis of today's holiday. After Anna Jarvis created the Mother's Day International Association in order to streamline the intimate day of observance to the second Sunday in May, President Woodrow Wilson legitimized the celebration as a nationwide holiday. Uh, the, nationwide, the holiday quickly became a commercialized opportunity for producers to sell flowers, candies, and cards, and many other uh, items. The commercialization of this day troubled Anna Jarvis. Uh, she felt that it was detracting from the personal and intimate aspects of the holiday and defied this. She, devi she defied this by starting boycotts, walkouts, and even condemned First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, a day Anna had created herself. She came to defy because those be, uh, because people that did not create it began to alter the, the meaning of the day by making it more about them and less about mothers. Uh, it was Anna's belief that mothers were much too important to trivialize a day set aside for them as a means for profiting financially. She herself, the creator of the holiday, never profited from the day. In fact, she literally died penniless after spending every dime she had fighting to have Mother's Day rescinded. 
Many of you that have experienced motherhood will certainly understand when I say that you often feel as if everyone else is attempting or profiting off of your sacrifice as a mother, but you yourself never seem to profit. Even though you sacrifice your needs, even though you sacrifice your desires, and even though you forfeit all of your dreams, you always seem to operate from a position that feels as if you're in deficit. In our text today, I'm certain Rahab, a woman that was in the business of service and service, serving and satisfying others' needs, felt as if she was always operating at a deficit. Like a mother, she was always being pulled on to supply a need to others when she herself felt empty. Uh, from the point a mother conceives, her life changes forever. From the point that she has this, uh, bo- this being growing inside of her, her life changes forever. She's expected to continue working in spite of the life that's growing inside of her. She's expected to work basically up until the date of delivery in spite of the life she's now caring for. And after working, she's expected to only take six weeks to recover and bond with her child. Then she's expected to get back to work. Like Rahab, I'm sure mothers feel uh, how it feels when people are constantly tugging on you. People aren't in invested in your mental well-being. People aren't investing in your emotional well-being. People aren't invested in your physical well-being. They're only invested in what it is that you have for me to profit from. Mothers in today's society is expected to compete in a workforce where they make 79 cents to every dollar that a man makes while maintaining a high degree of care and giving a great deal of attention to her growing children. It it would be easy when first reading this text to differentiate Rahab's profession from that of a mother. But I need us to take off the lens of our religiosity and look a little deeper at the text and understand what a woman like Rahab must have been going through. Here she is in the city of Jericho. She's in a city that 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 was that um, where evil had ran rapid. They worshipped idols. They uh, did all sorts of evil things, and it drew the attention of God. And so what God had told the children of Israel is that I'm going to give you this land, but you must first send in some spies. And this time when he sent in the spies, it wasn't like the last time. If you go back in the book of Numbers, it wasn't like when he sent the 12 in uh, and Joshua and Caleb were the only ones that came back uh, with a good report. Joshua this time said, I'm not going to make the same mistake that was made by Moses and I'm only going to have the spies report to me. And so he said, I need you to go into the city and I need you to check it out because that's the city the Lord has promised to us. And so the spies show up on Rahab's doorstep. Now, again, Rahab uh, was a prostitute. She was a harlot. She, she ran a home uh, 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 that was full of a bunch of uh, what we would consider unsavory activity. And, and, and her home would have been a very popular spot. In fact, uh, the home that w- in which she, they, they, uh, uh, extra biblical research describes that this was not just a brothel, but this also was an inn. So people that were just passing through could get a room and sleep for the night. Uh, uh, but here uh, we have God using what seems to be an unscrupulous circumstance. He's using it to ultimately bring about glory to himself. And let me caution us, my brothers and sisters, those of us that have been saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious Holy Ghost, let me caution you into not uh, not denigrating people who say the Lord is using them. Let me, not, let me caution us to not look at people and, and, and for us to determine whether they're qualified for God to use them or not, because God will use the most, uh, the mo- he uses the foolish things of the world, his word says, to confound the wise. So the spies show up and at Rahab's house, and Rahab's brings them in. And just like any other community in which you live in or which you will go to, uh, people know when things uh, when things that shouldn't happen. So the king sent some men to Rahab's house, and the king said, uh, I need you to go because there's some people here that mean us no good. And they came to Rahab, and Rahab said, uh, they came to Rahab and said, where are the men that came to scope us out? So Rahab uh, did as many mothers do. Rahab began uh, to make use of everything that she had at her disposal. First thing that I need us to understand, mothers today, I need you to understand that you have the solution. 
you have the solution. Uh, there's the philosopher Plato that said necessity is the mother of all invention. I think we see in the story of Rahab as we continue to work through it, uh, I think we also see in mothers uh, that mothers are, are, there's no greater creative on the face of the earth than that of a mother. Uh, moms learn from the beginning how to make more with less. Moms learn from the beginning how to care for a being or how to care for a soul that they've never had to care for a day in their life. In fact, many of you mothers who are uh, responsible for children uh, that, are, that are toddlers or uh, early adolescents, you've had to learn how to be extra creative during this time to keep them entertained, to keep them from bouncing off the walls to keep them uh, from ruining the house. And it's in those moments when you seem to be stuck or you seem to be presented with a set of circumstances that you've never been presented with before. It's in those moments that you realize you have the solution. And I need us to understand this morning because I know and I feel in my spirit many mothers beat themselves up as to whether they're good enough or not. Many mothers beat themselves up as to whether they're doing the right thing for their child or not. Many mothers beat themselves up on whether they've done a good enough job they provided right uh, or if or if everything that they're supposed to have in line is in line and I just want to let you know today to stop beating yourself up because you have the solution matter of fact let me go a little bit further and say you are the solution hey, you go girl and here Rahab, Rahab is, 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 is we find in the context of the story Rahab is guilty of, it, of obstruction of justice uh, she's guilty of harboring a fugitive. She's guilty of aiding and abetting. And she's even guilty of treason. But she recognizes that this is the only chance for her to save her family. Now, I need some of you mothers to go ahead, come on, and go with me right now because you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you've been put in a position where you felt that the only way to save your family was to take the next opportunity that you had before you. Rahab herself had been trying to keep her family together. She had been doing the things that she was taught and knew how to do to keep her family together. And certainly she beat herself up day after day, night after night, because she was not proud of what she was doing, but it was all she knew how to do. And we need to free some mothers today in our society and give them a pat on the back and give them a round of applause because they're doing the best they can with what they have. They're doing all they know how to do to save their families. And to you, we say round of applause. You go, girl. You're making it happen. You are the solution. So she's doing everything she can to save her family. And it's quite, it's quite obvious if we look deeper than, than the words on the page that she was not satisfied with where she is. Let's, come on, let's take this journey now into how Rahab must have felt. And I'm going to knock on a few of you mother's doors when I share this. She, she has certainly felt that she was better uh, than lying on her back when she had so much more uh, to offer in her head. She certainly felt that she was so much better than just uh, uh, giving all she had to stranger after stranger when she knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that she had power within her to save her whole family. And so the minute that the opportunity presented herself, Rahab recognized that she had the solution and she began to act because she took the spies and she hid them in her house. Took the spies and hid them in her house, recognizing that this was her opportunity to save her family. How did she recognize? Because if you read the text, it's 24 verses in Joshua chapter 2. You can read it later. It won't take you that long. But if you read the text, you'll see that she tells the spies that we heard about all of the great miracles that your God has done. And we ourselves are terrified of that. We're fearful of that. Not of you, but of your God. And it is a testimony in and of itself, mamas, uh, when people don't fear you, but they fear your God. Because they recognize you are limited in your own scope, in the own scope of your of your being, but if they fear your God, then they recognize that God cares so much about you that he ain't going to let nobody mess you over. I know, I know that you feel like uh, all of the pressure of parenting is on you, and especially my single mothers in, in today's society, you feel that the pressure is on you because you can't just raise your children, but you have to be the breadwinner. You have to be the disciplinarian. You have to be the problem solver. You have to be the one at 845 
have when your child says, I got a project due the next day. You have to be the one, no matter how tired you are, to run out to a store to Michael's or Pat Catan's or just close out for my old school people. You have to run out and get the supplies. You are constantly on. If something happens in school, the teacher calls you. If something happens on the job, the boss calls you. Uh, it doesn't matter where you go. You got to make sure that they understand and know God for themselves. You got to get them to church. You got to get them to vacation Bible school. You got to get them to all the doctor's appointments. And I know you just want a day off, but I came to tell you today that you aren't doing it on your own. You're doing it because there's a God who loves you, who cares for you, and will use every messed up situation in your life to bring him glory. Somebody shout, you go, girl. Hey! So Rahab, Rahab is responsible. She's got to deal with the responsibility of how she pulls this off. And, and so she, she lies to the men that the king sent. And I know people saying, well, she lied for the right thing. See, the Lord didn't move on behalf of her ethics. He moved on behalf of her belief. And many of us are punishing mothers based upon what we deem as improper ethics. But we aren't spending enough time looking at their belief. And mothers, I tell you today, you have the solution. Now, not only does the text show us you have solution, but it also shows us you have the strength. So we look at verse 15, it says, Rahab let the men down by a rope through the window. Now, I want you to picture this for a moment because we often spend more time uh, looking at the rope than we do looking at what it must have been like for a woman to hold two grown men at the end of the rope. I know, I know you're like, what does that have to do with motherhood? Because often, mothers, you feel like everything you have to worry about, you're holding on by a rope. It's like you're bent over and in the most disadvantaged position that you could possibly be in. And at the end of this rope is two growing children who needs change every day. At the end of this rope is four toddlers who, uh, who, 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 who need you every second of every day. At the end of this rope is, is, is an absent father uh, who does not supply or provide any assistance whatsoever. At the end of this rope is a father who all he seems to provide you is is a headache. Come on, I'm going to be real uh, if you want me to or not. At the end of this rope, uh, what it seems like is that it's so heavy, you don't know what to do. You don't know if you have enough strength to hold on to, to hold on a little bit longer. You don't know if at any given moment you just gonna, it's gonna, you're going to let go because you're going to lose your mind. Well, I came to tell you today you have the strength. At the end of this rope, was the deliverance for her entire family. How do I know? Because Scripture tells us the, the spies told her, bring your entire family into the house. Everybody in your family, bring them into the house because when we come back, anybody outside of your family that's not in the, lot, not, that's not in the house, we are not responsible for. So I'm telling you this morning, mothers, continue to cover your children in the house of prayer. Continue to cover your children in the house called affirmation. Continue to cover your children in the house called rewards. Continue to cover your children in the house called discipline. Continue to cover your children in the house called uh, aff affirmation. Continue to cover your children in the house. Don't think just because you discipline them that you're putting them out the house. Some of the best discipline that some of us had from our mamas was when we had to stay in the house. It's when she said, no, you can't go out. You know why? Because your friends would be outside playing. You would hear them playing, and, and, and it would hurt more. They, your mother did nothing uh, Your mother did nothing to you uh, to give you any type of physical pain. But the fact that she took something from you, uh, something that you love dearly, you were not able to benefit from it, uh, it hurt you deeply. And mothers, I just want to commend you this morning, uh, those of you that have to be the disciplinarian as well as the one that picks them up, 
up. I commend you for being able to wear multiple hats. But let me just tell you this morning, not only do you have the solution, but you have the strength to continue disciplining, to continue loving. In fact, the Bible says that the Lord disciplines those that are his. Hey! So discipline is actually an attribute of love. You have the strength. I know, I know, you didn't ask for it like this. I know, I know you beating yourself up because uh, you got pregnant out of, uh, outside of uh, 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 marriage. I know you beating yourself up uh, because you might have done it a couple of, a few, four, four, five, six times. I know you beating yourself up uh, because you, see, you, you're, you feel guilty that you brought your children uh, into, into uh, a circumstance that was not uh, good for them, that was not profitable. But let me help you this morning that even uh, though the circumstances were not ideal, you serve a God that looks high, that sits high and looks low. You serve a God that does not forget about you. You serve a God that looks beyond your fault, oh, glory be to God, and sees your needs. So even though the circumstances don't line up, baby, let me tell you, God will move things in such a way that he will show you that you have the strength and he will continuously provide even like he did in the case of Rahab. Here she is. She got two grown men up in her attic hiding from, uh, from some soldiers. And, 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 and she's terrified because she recognizes that she's rolling the dice here. Now she's rolling the dice. And I know many of you mothers feel like on a day-to-day basis you're rolling the dice. And she recognizes that this oil she got, she really didn't ask for. She didn't ask to be the savior for her family. She didn't ask to be the one uh, put in the position where she has to provide everything for her family. She didn't ask for that. But let me help you to understand something. Uh, uh, people with oil have to have the strength in order to endure the crushing because you cannot get oil unless you're first crushed and I understand that you ain't asked for the oil I understand you didn't ask God to give you this favor I understand that you didn't ask God to bestow upon you the greatness that is over your life you didn't ask for your last name you didn't ask for the resources that you have you didn't ask for none of that you didn't ask to be the one in your family that survived you didn't ask to be the one in your family that was educated you didn't ask to be the one in your family that was financially stable but baby because you got the oil there's gonna come some crushing and you have the strength to endure because it's your oil that the family is dependent upon Rahab hiding these spies she hit them and after she told the soldiers listen the men came but they left she told them the direction they went and she went up she said I gotta get y'all out of here but I need you to promise me something I need you to promise me if I get you out of here, I need you to promise me that you'll save me and my family. And it says a lot about Rahab, and it really links uh, Rahab with mothers because mothers spend a lifetime thinking about everybody but themselves. Uh, Rahab didn't say, if you come back and save me, uh, I'll get you out of here. She's the one doing the work, but she don't even want the reward. And, and, and I understand mothers, you you probably feel weak because you always worried about somebody else. You 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 don't speak poorly of of the father who's not there. You 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 you, you don't say no uh, to them when they ask for something. But you know if you get them this, you're gonna have to go without that. You 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 you, you give and you give and you give. Uh, and for the married mothers, let me go ahead and include you. Uh, and at the end of the day, when you're exhausted, you got a man tapping on your shoulder because he want his needs to be met. I'm talking about the position that is thankless and you're constantly being asked for something and you're always thinking about everybody else but yourself. I believe there's a lot of mothers out there that's watching right now that have gone without foods just so your kids can eat. I I believe there's mothers out there watching right now that has gone without new shoes and and walked with holes in your shoes uh, because your kids needed shoes. I know there's some mothers out there that that, that have had to go without, but all you wanted was for your babies to be taken care of, for your family to be taken care of. And there's a tremendous amount of respect that is owed to mothers who think about everybody else but themselves. And baby, that is is evidence that you have supernatural strength. You just have to hold on to the rope until the job is done. 
So not only do you have the solution, not only do you have the strength, here you go, you also have the stamina. You might be saying, Pastor Mo, uh, what's the difference between strength and stamina? I'm getting ready to tell you. Uh, stamina is elongated strength, okay? It's elongated strength. It's the strength that continues to kick in even when attacks from the opposition has been prolonged. <laughs> It's, it's that strength that allows you to make it another day, even though you felt exhausted and empty on yesterday. It's that strength that allows you to respond kindly to your child who has gotten on every nerve you have and has even gotten on nerves you don't have, but you still withhold uh, what you would want to enact on him as wrath. You still withhold it because of the love that's inside of you. It's, it's the strength that continues day after day. It's, it's stamina that gives you the ability to continue to go day after day. It's the stamina that, can, that Rahab benefited from as she stood at that window, even though she had worked all day. She stood at that window and she held two grown men at the end of the rope and was cautious not to drop them because had she dropped them, the deliverance that her family would benefit from would have been lost. And I know you feel the pressure to not drop it. I know you feel the pressure to not drop them. I want you to picture in your mind's eye. I'm getting ready to help you right here, and we're going to get up out of here. I need you to picture in your mind's eye what it was like for her at that window. You know, we often try to do things in our own strength. We often try to do things with our own stamina. But there's a tremendous lesson at that window that I need you to grab a hold to so that you'll know the way that you'll always get the job done. As Rahab is standing at that window and she's holding on to the rope, she had no other way to let the men out because had they gone out the front door, they would have been uh, noticed by the warriors, by the people that were looking for them. And so out the window, as she's looking down, she's holding on to the rope. And in my mind's eye, I can see the wall that the window was built in. And I can see her take her legs and put them up against the wall. And as she's holding on, she's found herself in anchor. <laughs> Come on, I need y'all, I need y'all to, as she's leaning against the wall, she's pinned her legs against the wall, and she's using the strength of the building, or she's using the anchor as a means to give her the leverage she needs to lower the men down to safety. <laughs> I need some of you to understand this because some of you have been trying to do it on your own and, and, and you're tired because you've been bending over holding the rope, but I need you to anchor yourself. Some of you have been trying to come up with solution after solution and you're tired of thinking and you're tired of trying to figure it out. Baby, I need you to, to, to anchor yourself. You've been trying year after year after year to steer your children in the right way. In fact, some of your children are grown and you're still trying to steer them in the right direction. Baby, I need you to anchor yourself because there is an anchor and his name is Jesus. And this anchor will never fail. He will always come through. He will always have your back. He will always give you the strength. But you got to anchor yourself. Hey. It was not meant for you to do it alone. For we have an anchor. And this morning, as we do our virtual altar call, this morning as we do our virtual altar call, you'll see the email address on the bottom of the screen, uccvirtualservice at gmail.com. You'll see that. Send your prayer request there. 
And also, if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to send us your name, your contact information, and just just in the in the comment, just in the uh, body of the email, just say I'd like to be saved. I'd like to receive salvation. I'd like to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And if you you want to partner with us, you can email that uh, to that to that email address uh, as well. But here's what I need. Uh, I need I need for all mothers everywhere that are watching this. I just need you to stand to your feet. I just need you to stand to your feet. I know it might be a little bit weird because we're not in the sanctuary, but we're not going to stop altar calls just because uh, we're not physically together. But we're going to do a virtual one. So I want you all to stand to your feet wherever you are. And I want you to place your hand over your heart. And I want you to say, I have the solution. I have the strength. And I have the stamina. And mothers, I want to applaud you today. I want to commend you today. But also what I want to do is I want to speak into your life today. Because I know you spend so much time giving out to everybody else. And you spend so much time sacrificing. But today I want you to know that God sees you. God loves you. And the very fact that you're standing today is evidence that God has not forgotten about you. For you mothers who need to forgive yourself, I hear you, Holy Spirit. I need you today to forgive yourself. Release yourself of the guilt and shame that has come from the mistakes you've made as a mother. It's the mistakes you've made that have made you to be a better mother today. Your children love you. Your children are proud of you. Your children are going to be okay. But you must release yourself of the guilt and shame that comes from making the mistakes of motherhood. And then for those of you who children have grown up and are grown and you're trying to figure out how to be the mom that you need to be for your children, I pray a special peace into your life. That you will know that everything you need to be for, what you, be for your child in this season of their life is already in you. And you don't have to do anything extra but be yourself. And before I turn it over to my wife, I want to send a special prayer out to the mothers who have lost children. Be it you lost children through miscarriages or you've lost children after they were born. Nobody knows the pain of losing a child like a mother that, that has lost one. And to you, we declare scripture that says there's a peace that passes all understanding. Pray that over your life right now. And we declare a healing in the that time you and it is in Jesus name we declare it all to be so we say thank God and amen hallelujah he's covered everything and we thank God for this day but I want to pray for the mother and daughters that ain't got really no issues. <laughs> you got the little things, you know, the little stuff that mothers and daughters go through. But y'all cool. <laughs> y'all love each other. Y'all got a good relationship. But sometimes mom finds herself overcompensating being too much of a best friend. And today I just want to pray that God gives you strategy, mom on how to love your daughter or your son healthy in a healthy way so that when it's time for them to part and go to college or it's time for them to move on and do something different or it's time for them to make a decision that you don't like that you will be okay with that so father we thank you for the word that has already come forth and i also want to pray for the person who does not have, <sighs> boy oh boy, they just can't have babies. And on this day, it becomes a little bit rough. It becomes a little bit hard. There are people that can make the decision to have children, but you, because the doctor said, and because things have went on in your body, you can't have a child. 
And so you despise this day. You despise the Happy Mother's Day that you see plastered around Facebook or that people send you because you've helped raise children but you couldn't have children. I pray for your heart today as well because I know the feeling. So Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that worship was amazing. We thank you that we were able to give your name the glory. But Father, I even ask right now, God, that you pour your love on the sons that got mommy's issues. Father, I ask right now, God, in the name of Jesus, that you just begin to do what you do best and just heal us all. So, Father, we thank you that this man of God preached an amazing word. We thank you, God, that we know that we can go, girl. We know that we can do what you've called us to do because you've given us stamina. You've given us strength, God. And so because of that, we say thank you. And so, Father, we ask that you just begin to pour your oil back into your son as he has poured out so amazingly. But God, in the name of Jesus, if there's anything in his heart, God, anything that's broken, we, he gives the broken pieces to you, Father, and asks that you begin to heal him even the now. So, Father, I thank you for the broken pieces in me that you, you're healing them now. And, Father, I ask that everybody that's watching, they'll be transparent and they'll give you their broken pieces. So, Father, we thank you. Father, we love you. And as the preacher said today, we're going to go, girl, and we're going to do it like you've called us to do in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. Before we do offering, there is one thing that came to my mind while she was praying. Is we also pray for those mothers who have stepped into the gap to raise children that aren't biologically theirs. As a person who uh, took on the responsibility many years ago to raise children that weren't biologically mine, I understand the, the, the difficulty and the strain and the struggle that comes with that. And so we pray for you as you, uh, uh, as you sacrificially and from an unselfish place give uh, the best of yourself to those children, that there will be a special blessing for you that the Lord will have for you uh, because of your sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, well, it's time to give. It's time for us to sow into the kingdom. Uh, it's time for us to give back to the Lord uh, just a portion of what he's given to us. We are here at Union Community Church believe in the principle of the tithe. The principle of the tithe simply means that we take 10% of everything that we have and give it back to God. That's what God asks from us. He asks us for a tenth. In fact, in Malachi, he says, if you don't believe me, try me. Try me and see if I don't open up a window and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room to receive. We have an excellent and uh, efficient way to give. If you would download the Givelify app onto your mobile device, if you don't already have it, you can find it in the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Uh, and then once you get on the, the app, you just search for Union Community Church. We're right here in Concord, Ohio. Uh, and there you can give. Uh, very fast uh, in an efficient manner probably won't take you 30 seconds uh, and you will be uh, you'll be able to give right from where you are so we uh, thank you for your gifts we thank you for your continued support uh, but most of all understand that it's not to us that you give but it's to God that you give so render to God uh, the best gift that you have to give and I guarantee you I guarantee you that he'll give you back more uh, than, than you have given to him. In fact, I wish we had time because I would ask some people that have been consistent tithers yeah. uh, to go ahead and just share their testimony of how God has provided for them. In fact, I've even seen uh, evidence in my wife's life of her uh, giving in an area and before we could even make it home, uh, she had gotten it back plus some. Right. Uh, so I believe uh, wholeheartedly, not just because somebody told me, but because I've experienced uh, that when you give to God, he'll give back to you yeah. and he'll give with good measure. Right. So I want you to know that we're not just talking at you. We're doing it. I gave mine earlier. Uh, we do it as well. We uh, obey that principle as well. So we thank you for your time. Yes. We thank you for your attendance. We hope, uh, especially worship, that was my favorite part today. Uh, we hope that, that the worship really uh, took you to a new uh, place. It took you to an elevated place uh, so that you can experience the miraculous and the, the wondrous things that God has yeah. in his possession. Yeah. Isaiah 45, around
now verse 3 says that uh, it talks about uh, it, there's some things that we will not get unless we're willing to go to the secret places. So I pray that this week, uh, as you experience worship today, that this worship will compel you and propel you into the secret places so you can get the precious reward. Yeah. As always, before we get up out of here, we just want to say we love you. And there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. Thanks. You go, girl. Thank you.